The question I bring to you today is can using magnetic repulsion increase the energy output of a generator? Over the next couple of minutes, I will show you what I've done to try and solve this problem. What first attracted me to the idea of trying to use magnetic propulsion to create energy was when I was at a science fair in 2010. While I was there, I saw a linear magnetic accelerator exhibit and wondered, if you create ener energy from magnetic propulsion in a straight line, what else would this be capable of? Would you be able to use the same repulsion concept in a nonlinear way, such as in a, a circle? What would this be capable of? Could you create rotational energy? After this, I came up with a couple of ideas. It's very important that when you come up with something, you always have to document them. It's very important to jot them down on any piece of paper, so anything will do. But simply jotting ideas and diagrams are not the end of what is your thinking process. Having an idea and putting it into motion are two very different things. From my ideas, my first apparatus was built in 2012. My concept was to place the magnets on the wheels here in a repulsing fashion so they would repulse counter-rotating the wheels to line the next pair into position and create energy. Along with a couple other parts such as a gear set on the back to keep the magnets lined up in synchronization and a flywheel to store rotational energy. Now that the apparatus is built, it's time to put it into motion. Here on the screen, I'm, uh, this is the first time that I tested out my apparatus. As you can see here, uh, the magnets that are 36 circular rare earth magnets affixed onto these two wheels with my, because of my fury for the magnets to, as they, the two wheels, sorry, but uh, my fury was that the magnets would come up into position and therefore counter rotate both of the wheels so we can uh, create energy that is more efficient from this. As the magnets are repulsing, the gear set on the back would help them in synchronization for them to line up exactly here and come into position so the magnetic repulsion would push each other apart, therefore counter-rotating each wheel and lining the next pair into position to do as the previous pairs had done. To help with the counter-rotation, as I mentioned, the, I added a gear assembly on the back to help make sure that the magnets would line up into position each time without trying to eliminate another variable that could happen. One other thing to help the apparatus run was this flywheel on the front, as I mentioned, to store rotational energy and the initial energy created by the magnets. Now that the apparatus is ready to experiment, let's start it. On the front here, we'll be starting it with a a uh, pulley modified with a notch in it to become a starter for a rip cord. It, now it's time to test out the experiment. But before your experiments, always remember to wear proper safety protection, such as safety <laughs> classes in here. Mine here are very stylish. <laughs> now that the apparatus is ready, let's test it out. Now for the moment of truth in the apparatus. Will the magnetic repulsion in the, on this version work? Let's find out. As you can see, this test runs for uh, very slowly and eventually dies off uh, as the test wears on to it. So as you saw, the first test ran for a pretty short time. So what should we do? Pull harder, of course. As you can see, I've got my dad to pull up for a test to see if he could get a better result with more strength of an input. As you can see, the test that my dad pulled picked up speed right away and ran for a longer period of time. But like the previous test, eventually died off the same way. 
the results. Okay, I did not invent perpetual motion, but the test with the magnets ran longer than the wheels without them, especially when the shielding was added in to create the imbalance. But this experiment had the hard to measure human input uh, put in through the ripcord, and it, it became a variable because we could not control how much rotational energy was started with the ripcord each time. The improved version. So I rebuilt my apparatus and I changed some, made some changes so the effect could be measured more accurately, fixing the past inaccurate variable problems I had before. Here's a schematic of my improved version of my apparatus. As you can see here, the magnets are set directly inside of the spur gears, which helped cut down on friction and help keep the synchronization so they'd line up exactly. An input motor on this helped eliminate the human input variable that was p caused because of the ripcord. An output generator on the top gave more accurate readings with a multimeter to make sure there was no mistakes. And also, my shielding block I had before was modified to create a better imbalance with two magnets that would set in repulsing position so that uh, the magnets would repulse up here if it has the same effect down below. Now, following this uh, schematic, a second version of the magnetic motor was created. The improvements are in this one, are the, the machine gears with the embedded magnets inside of them, the improved shielding block down below here, the input motor which replaced the human input variable, and to test it out using the tachometer, stopwatches, and multimeter, I measured the RPM, voltage, and running time very accurately. The differences. The input motor gave more consistent power than the ripcord method as I used before. The previous misalignment of the magnets was reduced now that they were part of the gear set. The shielding was built as a block and had a better shape and increased the imbalance with the magnets inside of it. The results here were very encouraging. Here are the results in RPM. As you can see, the black line here is represented, uh, represents the control with no magnets in it. You can see that for all of the tests with the magnets ran higher than the control run, which proved that the magnetic propulsion was more efficient than a regular motor. Yet the highest RPM came when the combination of magnets and, uh, were in the shielding block and in the gears itself. Using the output voltage I took for the generator, I cross-referenced the results to make sure that they were correct. As you can see here, these match the RPM so they were correctly as the profiles matched the ones in the graph before. So what do I see here? Creating an imbalance with the shielding block definitely increased the output of the motor. Seeing that the gears with the magnets ran higher than the control run without the magnets, it may be possible to create energy from magnets in a rotational way. Seeing how this may work, some real-world applications for my device could be include magnetically-assisted generators could be more efficient than the ones we have now, efficiencies could lessen the use of fossil fuels and therefore lessen pollution. This could also make other uh, generating projects viable by increasing their output power. I would like to leave you with some quotes that inspired me, and thank you for listening. <laughs>